Well, just let them know that it's going to be difficult. So, to hey, y'all, sorry about that. We weren't sure if we were going to stream, but I hit the wrong button, and so I guess we're going to stream. So, <laughs> starting over with Surprise. what I was saying. Surprise! Um, we have a class with us here today from Poor House in Dallas, and Studio Art House. A studio art house. They do all the arts, all the pores, and Cujo wants to say hi. Um, it is early. We hadn't intended on doing a video today. Cujo, enough. So, because we wanted to demo these paints for the class, we're here. Um, live. We are live. <laughs> um, so, I... I probably won't answer that many on-screen questions. This is going to be like a candid live stream where I can answer questions for the class that is on the other side of the camera. But what we're doing is demoing paste, powder, tint, base tint, and resin arts Ooh. grainy tint. That's a paste. So that the class yeah. can see the difference in each of those because of they do so acrylic pours so we're going to try to show them the awesome that is like, a resin pour so maybe that that's probably too much that's what's <laughs> happening so you're going to hear a lot of voices in the background that you don't recognize it's just the class we're opening the floor to answer questions during the demo so candid live feed so you guys can see the bubbles in that, and that's what the heat gun is gonna do, is get rid of those bubbles. Because if you don't get rid of them, they'll leave like pock marks in the surface of your finished resin piece. And obviously that's, you want something that's glass. Yeah. And Ultimately if you notice, I put gold. in, I put, I, I, you put in the powders first when you're, when you're mixing them, um, because they put the resin in there and put the powder on top, and you stir it, it's gonna puff up in your face. Oh. So this stops that, and then, but then with the tints, Put the resin in first, then the tint, because the tint will just soak into the bottom of the cup. Mm -hmm. And you'll just waste. Oh, okay. The tints are a little bit more expensive than the other colors, but they're super pigmented. So you can range from one drop to like, I don't think you can get any deeper of a color after like seven drops, but it'll change what it, the color is from a light faint color all the way to a deep color. Now, as far as getting the cells, the different cells in the uh, the, the pour, uh -huh. um, what what do you use to create the cells? Well, different kind of paints can get you different kind of cells. So, like if I wanted to do an ocean with like a frothy wave, I would use like um, just resins, white, or color obsessions, white, a paste, basically. Um, but if I wanted like larger spider web looking cells, like anything this big mm -hmm. I would use this the base tint because so whatever science is in yeah, there I forgot this was a little dark makeup so um, it dispersses brighter. whatever colors go over it and something that's going to be difficult so for you guys mm -hmm. that do acrylic yeah. pouring yeah, is in oh, acrylic world right mm. you want to have the white <sighs> on top of the other colors to make the dispersion and all the things different weights Weight doesn't matter as much in resin because of the thickness of the resin itself. But with the um, the base tints, you want that to be on the Barely bottom. Put any gold in there. Yeah. And that'll disperse whatever color you put on top of it. Well, the reason I ask is because in the in the, the pores that we use, we use a lot of silicone. Mm -hmm. or not a lot, but a spray of silicone. Right. And silicone causes all the cells, which is beautiful, except when you're trying to resin it, you get a lot of pitting because mm -hmm. the the resin won't cover some of the, the silicone. Right. right. And so it, you, you get you know, pits in. But mm -hmm. in this in this fashion, you don't get the, that kind of pitting. Right. It's not really a concern as long as you don't use any oil-based additives. So Resi Blast will be one of those oil-based additives that will give you that same exact problem. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some people make it work for them. I have no idea. I've tried it more times than I can count. And every time I've had like a greasy film over it. Now I'm moving away completely from using any silicone in my acrylic yeah. pores. Um, and I'm tweaking my mixes to just 
uh, I can create the same cells. It's all about density. And so as long as the paint is at the right density, it's gonna, it's basically sinking and allowing that cell to form. So you can do it without silicone, okay. but this Hold just on. avoids it all together by using it in the, with the pigment in the resin. Yeah, I just, I just, I get nervous with this right here. I don't know how he's comfy against my shoe laying on cords. <laughs> <laughs> Because he's, oh he's goodness. Auntie Linda will take care of him. And when you're doing a negative pour, you're, you, um, you know, you want a solid, a solid white. Make sure you have no pigment on your hand. Because if you start spreading this white on there and you get a color in there, it won't go away. Unless you probably try to take it out and then put more white down. But that's just a little bit more time that you don't need to be spending on it. Right. So this is just pigment and resin. There's no paint other than just the powder that you saw him mix in. And no, you can see the, how intense the, the colors are, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the white. Usually when I pour, I put um, a, a thin layer of the clear down before I put any of the colored there. resin, and that just helps the, the painted resin or the colored resin to flow more easily. But when you use powders, you, you don't really want to do that or do a thinner layer because it'll dilute the powder mixture, which and it won't do that so much with the tinted. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. No, he just wants the present. Okay. You see how you can still kind of see through mm -hmm. the white. You're not you're not trying to make this opaque because you already have a white base. So mm -hmm. I'm getting nervous when I get this on my shorts. And this stuff is self leveling, so it will it will find its way and then go off if there's too much. But if not, it'll it'll rest right at the corner. And you've leveled your table here, yeah. your workspace, yeah. so. And you can see, like, if you're heating it up too much and, you know, maybe one of your, um, I just use spray paint caps, if, if, if they're a little bit off, mm -hmm. um, you can just turn it, mm -hmm. turn it so it kind of evens out. It might make it look, you know, a little different. Anyways. Now, can you, if you uh, use the heat gun and get it too much, too hot in one spot, will it evaporate the resin or? It, it'll scorch it. It'll scorch it. It kind of bakes it to where the spot is okay. and it'll okay. be like, it'll look kind of like a scab. Okay. And at that point, the only thing you can do to remedy it is wait till it sets, sand that piece and do a top. And so you want to make sure that when you use a lot of heat, you keep your heat source moving, whether it's a torch or a heat gun because scorching your resin it's gonna smell mm -hmm. it's gonna smell like obviously overheated plastic because ultimately that's what's going on mm -hmm. hey andrea i keep meaning to send you a text but life and just by so. heating that up uh heating this up it makes it a lot easier to spread around and Get an even coat. We always use base tints on the bottom on the areas that we're looking for larger cells. You can also mix your the whites that you use in a piece. So I'll put one kind of white in one area where I don't want large cells, but I do want white represented. And the area that I want cells, then I'll put this specific type of paint I in so that I can control. The area that you left blank in the center there you didn't put resin on what, what, what I want to do with that is so that these colors will stay right here and not get so diluted mm -hmm. and that way when you spread them out that's when you get all the cells and these will stay think of it like with watercolors or alcohol inks even if you don't put that like an alcohol or a blending solution down it kind of sticks to that area and then where you have an alcohol or something that it can flow over it it's it moves more easily and it dilutes and fades and things like that you so you know how we talk about fluid dynamics and if water wants to go where it's already wet that's that so he's left it dry so it'll kind of puddle in that area and not move too far yeah and it's funny because you can actually 
if, if normally she said that she you know we put a clear down you you could put your resin on there heat it up and tilt it and that and the color will just move along the top of that it, won't, it will not touch the the, the canvas board. yeah so this will stay right here if i'm going to tilt it it's not just going to slide down and oh okay yeah so what um blue what's the blue was that a paste that's an indigo okay an indigo by just resin paste and this is color obsessions powder it's their purple topaz love that color now this is a nice one so the powders are almost always metallic or sparkly in some way um you can find flat colors or base colors but for the most part they're going to be metallic and you see how much little i mean we just barely use that and there's still some left you don't need to make a lot of color mm -hmm. unless you're working on it like a table size and that's why they have all of the little molds that they use at the end they put any of their leftover in those little molds yeah and then those They're become wasting the a key light. rings or little you know this is, my, this is a, a, a transparent color it won't show up on here but it'll show up in these colors okay. so that's always fun and, you know, it'll show up on this side obviously but and is it is I'm it something that's this. labeled transparent or is that just something that the you tint, know the oh, that's this the is tint. just the tint. it's just yeah. inherent mm -hmm. for the tint it will never okay. get opaque it'll, it'll get darker but it won't get opaque gotcha. all the tints so are going to be transparent in the white it would uh, you would see, you would can see, the see. Way you'd be able to see through it but it won't show up on the black now with the gold not so much mm -hmm. what you, is this you only need oh that's that tint over yeah over the so w I want to mix those two. Also, that's a great thing. I'm glad I thought about that. Um, they're buildable, so you can mix that color with a tint and make a different a color. Okay. Oh. So if you don't see a color that you like, but you know color theory, and you know this color and this color mm -hmm. will make something like this color, mm -hmm. you can do that with a paste. Trash. All that trash from I don't know if it's a, from a stick or from. Oh shoot! All the windows open. Which is you can just give this to me if it's a failure, really. I don't mind. So what I'll do is I'm going to show you what it looks like with the heat gun, and then she'll do a swipe. We'll do a swipe on here. Um, you can use any number of techniques. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you, you heat it up so it loosens up a little bit. Um, and if you're if you're trying to push it off, heat this area up a little bit first, and then push that so it, it's a little easier to. To move it, yeah. So you can see it moving. Can you see it, see it start to liquefy almost under the mm -hmm. warmth of the gun? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Yeah. So when you said that you swipe that, that's what they're yeah, doing. The sniping method. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, that's pretty. I like the, even just the lines that you have mm -hmm. over there. That, mm -hmm. that by itself is just beautiful. Oh, yeah. And then, of course, see how the cells started to develop mm -hmm. almost oh, yeah. immediately. Yeah. You've got the same cells that we do with, yeah, with without. The color. Right. So this area doesn't have any of the base tint, the white and the black. It's right. not touching it, so the cells aren't going to be as big. These will continue to grow as the resin settles. But this is standard cell size for something that doesn't have the additive from the base mm -hmm. tint. So you can get cells without an additive and without the base tint. It's probably Sue hair, if I had to guess. <laughs> well, we, we tell people all the time, if you purchase anything from us, odds are you're going to get some of our, like, poor pup <laughs> DNA. Oh. You can swipe that if you want, right? You may, you may do that. No, it's already pretty thin. It's fine. What kind of paper are you swiping with? Wax. Yeah, it's basically a, a wax paper. You can use, I've used this big paper. Um, but it does have a, 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 sh a shiny side to it. It really, it really just depends on, on. Oh my God! Yeah, wait till you hit that with heat. And see, that's what's that's what I like about the using a torch because you just hit it real quick. You don't have to worry about the heat gun being so hot. I guess I and and of course, the heat gun is has a little air movement behind it, so yeah. it's always going to push stuff around. If you want it to be where it is, you can use the torch and, you and it'll it pop the bubbles, but it won't move it. Because yeah. that way white's kind of then tilt it that way, so it grabs. We have this pedal down here. 
So that like for it gets a sewing rid of, machine. Yeah, it gets rid of <laughs> touching this because this you'll you'll be getting it all over your hands and turn this off and on. The next day you have to like oh, it's jump start it basically. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that, that kind of uh, gets rid of that. Hook it into that pedal. The back of the pedal has an outlet. Right. And then so we you just left it on. They just left you it leave the on. heat gun on, but have the pedal like step on it to turn it on and step on it to turn it off. I've got a pedal like that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, one of those with the sewing machine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's a lot of the same techniques. You can tilt, you can swipe, you can use the blow dryer like a Dutch pour um, technique in acrylic, but you're just doing it with resin. Yeah. So what the heck, we've been wasting our time. <laughs> <laughs> you converted me. <laughs> got one. I want to try one down, oh, you got four to go. Me already. <laughs> yeah, I'm into it. See, look at look how much different that looks on black. You had me at hello, so <laughs> we're good. I'm gonna try to do more of a, a circular. Yeah, grab that, that grab that teal and move it down over. I want to see that teal over there. Where's your teal? Oh, it's right here. If we just you know, over here. Have one of these you see how slow I'm going. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Yeah. That's fun. So once this sets up, it'll be just as vibrant and shiny as when we put it in there. Because you know when you do acrylic pour. You're like, it's amazing. And the next day it's like, it's just a little dull, you know? And a lot of times, like, I like that one that I showed you guys. I like that it's a little matte looking, you know, but. Yeah, the great thing about the acrylics, I mean, when they, they dull out, but then when you resin them, it just mm -hmm. pops mm -hmm. again, yeah. you know? It's like, hey, somebody just inserted a you can swipe Some over it. Blood again. in my veins. Mm hmm So and we recommend this, you don't when have you have to worry about it. You right. We recommend you use about a pencil width of like contact this amount or maybe pinky. If you lay it down too much, you're gonna pick up too much paint and you're gonna get gaps because it's gonna drag too much paint. So you only want a minimal contact. See? I learned something new today. And if you go too fast, you're gonna get skips in it. Mm -hmm. So you have to take your time and make sure it's grabbing as it's distributing the paint all the way around. And, and you notice how he'll warm it up a little bit, make it liquid again. Oh yeah, now I see him. Yeah, I see him. Oh God. wow. And unlike acrylic, where once it's down, it kind of gets a mind of its own, and you sometimes can't control it depending on how much you've put on. This, you really are able to manipulate it more because of the viscosity of the resin. It allows you to kind of move it slower and. Um, Kind of layer it where you want and pull it or push it around much more than you can with the really high flow acrylics something that's super cool with this resin is that once you have it working for maybe 30 minutes it'll set to the point where it's not fully set but you can heat only the areas that you want to move mm -hmm. so in the next 10 minutes if you tilt it, it's still gonna move a little bit, mm -hmm. but not so much. And so if you just heat the area you want to move. Oh, so you can control. You can kind of control, yeah. like, I wanna save this part. Like, it's not gonna be completely still, but more so than. You guys are such a good team. <laughs> Help, helping him hold his shirt out of the resin. <laughs> oh, I like that. See, and so then, helper. now, the other thing you can think about is, once this first layer sets, let's say you want to add depth and you want to add a whole other layer, you're able to go in and add a second layer of resin after it's uh, set. You want to, you know, make sure you time it so it's not fully cured, like 24 hours you can do it. If it's after that, you need to sand it and then layer your next um, coat. But, uh, yeah, you can, you can put a second and a third layer That's on top. Really I think you have some black left. We have a lot of clear. Yeah, no, we do have a lot of clear. Looks pretty good from here. So you don't have to put a clear coat over the top of this. It's 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 already yeah. got 
Especially with, with this gold, yeah. you can. Uh-huh. Um, like if you get trash in it or if there's, you know, maybe a divot or something uh-huh. or um, just let it dry for 24 hours. The thing with the gold, you're not going to want to sand that gold because that gold is on top. Uh-huh. That's what that shimmer is. You'll sand that right off. You'll still be able to see the gold kind of, but... You'll uh-huh. see the gold color, but it the won't shine be that won't shimmer. Be okay. So, it flex up. So you put that on right out of the cup mm-hmm. With, mm-hmm. at the end. Yeah. Okay. My baby moon. Well, I just want that to say, yeah. yeah. So is it, um, in the end, is it level though? That yeah. Well, resin or will it be higher? No. Um, anything you mix into resin is going to self-level. Okay. So it's really important that you have a level surface when you set it and let it finish. Uh-huh. Um, so he just added that little top part and you can see him blowing waves into it. That's setting higher right now because it's colder because we've been adding heat to this whereas that's yeah. straight out of the bottle but it'll catch up it'll, it'll warm up yeah. and it'll all glass out um i will say though if you're going to do it for a table to keep it like absolutely everything resistant and okay bowie <laughs> Come on. Um, you would want to do a clear top coat because while the resin... Oh, did you just decide to jump for it? He did. Oh, boy. He oh, just did no. a little nose nose oh, plant. No, Not no. too bad. He's okay. Just because the resin has all those resistance, He's got use the paint may not. Around him. So you want to make sure... He's got a lot of cushion. What do you use as the top coat? The art coat. Just a clear... Without any tint. So when you... It'll seal everything in and give it... With all. no tint, right? You wait no 24 color. hours, but you do you have to sand to make it adhere? You don't have to wait 24 hours. If you wait till it's tacky set, which is like you run your finger across it and it won't stick to you, but if you leave your finger there, it's going to be fingerprint. You know, that's like depending on what brain you use is how long I would recommend. For art coat, I would wait like 10 hours and then you can do a clear coat without sanding because it's still tacky. Okay. So it'll bond. So you won't lose the. the right. Streaker. It'll adhere. Okay. Um, you can sand around the areas. If it, if it completely sets up, you can add a couple of them. Or just stand around, like, when he did those whole things. Uh-huh. Don't Spectacular. Mm-hmm. And every time you put, like, let's say I added that, and I added just a little black, always hit it with heat. Because those bubbles are, are there. You can't see them, but they're there. And when it dries, yeah, it'll be a little pit, it'll be a little bubble, mm-hmm. yeah. So just, just go right over it. <clears throat> to fill those pits in, we had to sand it, and then yeah. It so it's a di- it's a different kind of a pit than it's not like a um, silicone pit. It's not that much where it's all the way back bare to the canvas. It's more mm-hmm. like a bubble that's popped, and it's got like a little rim around it. That's what it's you'll not see. Not as unattractive as a, an acrylic pour pit. Yeah. But, but you still need to sand it and then so did it. The, unless you, if unless you're still tip. It. It's not going to re-pit. Like, if I took an area that had a pit in it and I just did a clear over it, it's not going to re-pit. It's just going to fill it. Oh, okay. You're going to... So, but in order, in order to get it to <laughs> adhere, though, you have to... It, you just want to create a little extra tooth. So, yeah. just to hit a little sand. Like it's a just 220, so 400. Unless it's still tacky, and then you could do. If it's still tacky, do not sand it because you're just gonna take your artwork right. off. But that'll adhere to it without having yeah, to sand. sand. Okay. But if you you can watch it, and you're like just whenever so you walk through film. and like check it setting up What's in your dust free area. The pink not reading. Um, it's usually the aquas, yeah. and sometimes the purples will look blue. Yeah. Um, mm. If you keep an eye on today. it, it's a lot of you good can light pick things out or add just a drop of color if you notice a pit coming up because it'll self-level. Yeah, Whenever you add more resin, light. it'll the new resin heat will try to catch up to what you already have out there. What do you do with the suns of the canvas? What I'll do with this is I'll probably sand it and just paint it black and okay. paint this white just so it kind of right. makes it nice, clean. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because you get like these that. edges. It's not like acrylic. When acrylic goes over, it's like solid. Right. This gets diluted, stretches out, so it's not as opaque and mm-hmm. you can't really see it. I'm gonna go put this over there. We need to mm-hmm. move that. Move. There's mm-hmm. stuff in there. Yeah, there's just a couple of. Um, Beautiful. She's playing. No. Hey, Why did it take that long? I know. Well, of course, it's me. 
that once you do it a couple times, it So when you pour, let's say, you, that 10 hours later, I want to put another coat of just clear. Mm -hmm. I have to use the heat again. And no. You okay. can just pour there right over any it. bubbles the second. Well, you'll yeah, you'll want to reheat the, the next layer you put on. Right, but that's you won't what I need mean. to reheat the layer below. Before no, no, you I meant the top. Yeah, the top. Okay. okay. Yeah, every, every time you add a layer, you want to heat it to remove any of the bubbles okay. that you've mixed in. That's what I thought. I just want to make sure. Mm -hmm. I understand. Right. Of the resin. So like he did ten ounces. If he were gonna just do a clear top coat. I would even go less than six ounces for the amount of surface. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I didn't hear it's your a question. clear to do a clear if coat, you, a top coat. Yeah. If you wanted to do a top coat on that later, how much just would did, you mix? You, did, you started out. Man, well, and there's so I have a lot left here. Like I have quite a bit. Um, I, I would say, I would say to get a, a good, nice uh, flood coat, I would do four to six ounces, right? Like a good flood coat, so where yeah, it's an eighth inch level. So now you're just gonna use up what you mix. Yeah. So whenever we have any left over, we do coasters because we've had like basically all of our expenses for show covered in just coaster sales. We sell them for five dollars a piece. The last time we did a fire sale, I think we made like three eighty on just coaster sales. Wow. And we I paid mean, for our booth. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good because if somebody, you know, can't afford a big piece, they well, that's what it is. They want to leave with something. Yes, yes. And yeah. the so big pieces will get their attention to come into your booth. Yeah. But almost all the time, I can't afford this. Yeah. We have posters. They're five dollars a piece. Mix and match. Keychains. Yeah. I mean, we have molds. You just get molds and oh, make. Oh yeah, just like I mean, the it's cookie. The, the excess. Molds. Mm -hmm. All that whole box is full of like Star Wars molds and and that's what these are these all kinds from of the stuff. Mold? yeah those are the yeah. drizzle the oh, drizzle. drizzle so they kind these of are drizzle drizzle molds. molds yeah you can do one that's so, a drizzle mold drizzle mold and um they're just like someone took a, an actual like a gate slice or something like that and created a mold off of it and since Okay, so molds 101. If it's a matte mold, your pieces are going to come out matte. If it's shiny, it'll come out shiny. Really? And so with these molds, uh -huh. only the like crystally areas are shiny and everything else is flat. Oh, so that juxtaposition so like looks geo looking. Yeah. Okay, so if you just took a candy mold, it's going to be matte. If it's shiny, Oh, some like, of like a polished, you know, the um, so. bunny molds that are like shiny um, chocolate mold, then it would be shiny. So these are shiny. Oh. Inside. So these will come out shiny. These are matte and they will always oh. come out matte. Okay. You can also cheat and take a clear, like the triple glaze spray paint that we have. It's a clear gloss spray. Mm -hmm. Hit them after you and they'll, they'll be shiny. Or after they come out. Do you put it in the mold or you mm -hmm. put it on top after of it? After they pop out. So, for example, what are those ones that we just did? So, like, this one is yeah. matte because the inside of those molds are are matte, mm -hmm. right? So, I think these. That should look awesome tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Love the gold in there. That's All right, great. so we always say that coasters give you a false sense of you've achieved something because it's such a small area and you, you put this paint down, you put paint down and you blow it and it's there and you're like, oh my God, I can do this. And then you try to do it on a bigger size and you're like, what is the problem? Because yeah. okay. rarely coasters go bad unless you just put way too much, um, way too much paint on there. Hey y'all on the live there feed, sorry we're not answering questions. This is just a candid live feed because we have a class in-house um, IRL and we just wanted to show y'all a little bit of a demo from this demo. So you didn't do anything to that, it's just a ceramic tile? Yeah. So we have a box down here of just tiles, Home Depot, just get a flat. And it'll adhere to them. I have had them um, peel off and I have had the resin for some reason 
um, like resist. And I don't know if it's something in manufacturing or between point A to here. Uh -huh. So to be safe, we sometimes spray with a bonding primer or paint it with a bonding primer paint or scuff it with some heavy sandpaper. Mm -hmm. If it looks like, if we had any in this batch that do that, then that's what we do to the rest of them. If one of them does it, then we will scuff okay. the rest of them. Because we haven't had anyone come back to us and say, yo, this peeled off. Mm -hmm. But if we notice it kind of looking like it may do that, then we'll do it because we don't want to sell anything that, if like a grand kid comes over and plays with it, because no one's going to pick it an art piece, but a child might, mm -hmm. and we don't want that. So that's our... So have you had any problems with these tiles? I, I haven't had any. It's a case-by-case -case basis test. So we'll pick from like different points in the case and do a test when we first get it, and if it looks at all mm. like there's going to be an issue, then we'll go ahead and scuff all of them with like... We have, this is a wall of sanding paper. Or just spray it with a flat spray paint mm -hmm. and it acts, it can act as bonding primer. Cool. I love these colors together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They look good on black too. Yeah. I, didn't, I should have spray painted one of these black. All right, so we'll do a swipe. It's abnormally quiet. Now, when you have, <laughs> um, when you have, uh, like the white base that you just put down, and then you put black on it, when you swipe, or even with the um, heat gun, will you get a lot of gray, or will it kind of uh, stay separate enough? Does it make gray really easily? If I put the black and the white on the same piece, yeah. Okay, so the base tints are a thinner paint, so that thins the resin. So the <laughs> odds of it combining are greater if, if you have a thinner. So with the tints, since they're super liquid, mm -hmm. odds are greater that it could mix. Okay. Um, I would recommend not using two different color base tints in one piece. Like I wouldn't put the white and the black next to each other and then swipe over it. Mm -hmm. Because it'll just make money. It, it'll cancel out. Uh -huh. Ultimately, the cells that you get, it, it just won't if there's two of them. Mm -hmm. For, and sometimes it works. Most times it doesn't. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to do a white and a black, I would do a black paste and a white base tint or the other way around. I wouldn't do two base tints. Okay. And if you have any more, nope. I was going to say, let's mix a white regular paste, but. That's okay. That's fine. Just kind of stopped. I put way too much paint down on oh, here. Do like, a smush. Just, that's what I wanted to a do. Dip. A smush. Okay. A smush. You guys call it a smush. No. I call it a dip. Well, if it's too, piece, we call it a dip if it's like on oh, the surface. On it. But yeah. if it's like two actual pieces, then we just smush it. That didn't work. <laughs> we'll put some more on that and re smush. Yeah. I like the negative space on the one that's yeah, a lot of white. Like yeah, that actually is really cool looking. If you hit that with heat, it would sell up in some of those thinner areas. Just a little bit on here. Let's put a little bit of this on here. Yeah, it has cool aluminum in it. It's really. Mm -hmm. Your hat is all over blocking the camera sometimes. Oh, is it? So the purple that Jeff used is just resin indigo paste. Christy. That looks like it's going to turn into marble for a little girl's room. <laughs> we did um, a resin countertop for a lady in Baltimore. She wanted a pink and gold inlay marble for her really bathroom nice. countertop. It looks so it like turned pink out really marble. Cool. Mm -hmm. And her like the edges of her countertops were beveled, so yeah. we like <coughs> continued the design. It was beautiful. Did the you video. What pink did you use? Though? Not a 
bright one like that, right? No, oh, it no. was like a muted bubble gum. More the like base of it color. was white, but the veining was pink and gold. It looked really classy when we were done with it. So there you go. So you can use a straw, you can just, you know, give a little puff, or you can use a heat gun. We have these too, the dusters. That is such a fine. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 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 Although those, you you have to watch how hard you push because you don't want to like spatter it off yeah, and will yeah, if you're not yeah. careful it'll just it's wasted right there on there. Mm-hmm. that's a beautiful oh yeah doing. i know you can, i know what if you just stuck a tile in there <clears throat> would it well I mean, if it you wanted to, to you would um if you were to do a smush it would do this so what a lot of people do is they take those and do like necklaces they like cut out the areas and put it in for the mm-hmm. charms you can also, if you have enough space, let it set completely. Measure the square tile area and just cut that out. Number one, and put a quick coat down. Resin is no when to stop. Mm-hmm. Just like just pouring. like that. Just yeah. stop. Mm-hmm. You have a bare edge right here. Oh, I do. Wow. Mm-hmm. My mom used to say, "Learn to meet well on the floor." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's right. <laughs> That's something that is a struggle for a poor artist because. Mm-hmm. You like it all, mm-hmm. except for one little piece, and you're like, I'm just gonna fix this. Uh, and then it goes into the other tilting. areas, and now you're like, ugh. Now I have to fix that, and then that, then and this, then that. And then all of a sudden, the whole piece is just not how you wanted it. Yeah. It's overworked, and you're just like, well, I guess I'll pour over that later. All these edges are showing. Yeah, it's gonna, that was going to be my question, too. What if you do one of these and you just don't like it? Do you pour over and try to get it off? or Ooh, we just let it set and then pour For over the next day. a piece like this, if I didn't like it, I don't have that much invested. And a lot of times, what I don't like sells first in a show. <laughs> So I'll leave it. I'll let it live for a little while. And if we hold on to it for so long, then I'll sand it and use a transparent top color and just do another design over it with transparent so that the bottom layer is not wasted, uh-huh. but it's added to with a top just simple. Okay. painting. You see how that gold just it sticks to all those other colors. Mm-hmm. Those also, if you don't like it, just throw a lot of glitter at it. Oh, yeah, sure. glitter so, always helps. Well, I just wonder if I do something, you know, on that acrylic. Yeah. yeah. What happens if I hate it? Because yeah. if you pour again, and I don't want, I wouldn't want to lose the clear. You know, if I leave a little clear. Yeah, and you can. So if you have an area in your acrylic pour that you want to resin over and maybe add some color in places. You can just pour clear resin over the area that you want, mm-hmm. and then you could pour colored resin into the areas that you want to accentuate or mm-hmm. add to. Or cover or up. Cover yeah. up. Or cover yeah. up. Yeah. Works. Yeah. Like, it, let's say you have an area that didn't stay as white as you wanted. You can put white resin over that area. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, Jeff, is that perfect? So you all is not lost. Yeah. When you how's it going to yeah. be? That'll, that'll, well, it'll look like this. So oh, you can okay. see through that. That's gold. It just kind of sits on top, sits in the middle, and oh, it still gives it a nice little transparent look. Mm-hmm. I spray painted the other one that you were looking yeah. for over there yeah. with the clear oh, glaze. Oh, yeah. Okay. She spray glazed it. Yeah, just with the triple thick stuff that we use mm-hmm. at the studio. There should be almost dry. I want to see what it looks like when you spray when glaze the skull I did. Oh yeah, it dries super fast. How long do you leave the pieces of the Um, I if I'm making a keychain or anything out of them, then I'll try to pull them out before the 24-hour time. Even though if it does, you can just hit it with a heat gun and it'll make it malleable again. Like these are sitting in the sun, I can move it. If I put it in the freezer, it would become more rigid. Oh. So, but you want it kind of soft. Almost bendy if you're going to do like an eyelet or a keychain because you have to screw something in there. Okay. So you want it to be easier to screw in there 
and then also for it to adhere during the setting process. That should be fun. If it's not ready to come out and you like bend the mold to pop it out and it just bends with it, it's not ready. So, I mean, it's relatively easy to work with. It'll yeah. tell you when it's ready to pop out. use it to seal if I've done an acrylic pour with a little bit of silicone I'll hit it with a just a light coat of that triple thick first and then when I resin over it I get a super smooth resin so it seems when to I was help seal top coating it. Sadie's pieces yeah. I did that on one of them and I did a couple layers of clear mm -hmm. that silicone was still like yeah cuz she loves up? her silicone <laughs> so it took a couple coats to seal those those pieces in. Yeah. Patty's pieces. <laughs> that is Casey. So have you oh, all been converted? Pigments. Am I now going to have to teach a resin class <laughs> instead of a acrylic you pouring class? knew that coming in. So I know. Yeah, that's why I brought you <laughs> here. <laughs> wow. so it's more like a workshop. Yeah. It's not, yeah. Like, like we say in the ghetto, when the police pull you over, just go ahead and get out with your hands. <laughs> you know you did it. Yeah, yeah. I did. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, oh, Zen, Zen here. Did you even take a, I didn't even do a video. I should have done it. This is going to be online. I'll pick up, yeah, I'll pick up your link. I didn't put my glasses. She says, uh, my doctors are referring me for a CT scan oh. to see if my hand looks Oh, no. Poor thing. She is really sick. She would really have wanted to see this. Well, oh, we'll do um, on the business cards has the link I'll make sure to our YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. Um, but whenever you want to come back, Sue, if, as long as we're not out of the country or whatever, yeah, then I might just have to go on one of your cruises. We oh, are going to do a poor cruise. Fun. It's going to be fun. Well, I'll come back when you guys are out of the country and I'll do a poor live stream. There you go. I'm doing this for Jeff and, and Eric. We <laughs> That'd had, be awesome. We had uh, Stone Coat Countertops. <laughs> Stone Coat Countertops hijacked our channel and did a live one. I saw that. That was, was so right? fun. Country, yeah. That was so fun. Like, Those guys are in Australia. so funny. They are. They're great. And they really care. For them to be as big of a company as they are, um, they really care about their the people that purchase their product. Where are they located? Oregon. Oregon. We're, We're going to be going back up there for another visit. Yeah, that's going to be fun. They in have the a summer. brand new shop. We're going to do a mural on one of their new shop walls. If you guys ever seen, you ever seen the trees that you can drive through? Yeah. Uh -huh. That's where they are. Wow. Like I thought, mm, these trees are going to be big. And he's like, check out these trees. And I'm like, yeah, they're pretty cool. They were like this big. He goes, Wait till we walk inside. Like, wait till we get deeper. And it is, I mean, you couldn't fit a tree in here. Mm -hmm. I mean, and there's trees growing out of side of trees. Like, it's it's beautiful over there. Never in my life I've seen that. Okay. Have you guys been to, uh, where's that? Yosemite. Isn't Yosemite has the. Yeah. Yeah. There's a couple of areas, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and the redwoods. Yeah. 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 yeah, and the redwoods there. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're trees. And they talk. No, that they it's not Muir Woods. But it's, it's, yeah. But uh, in the East, I mean, it's in the Bay area. They, they've got trees that they they cut holes or cut cars holes in them. Cars go through one side and come out the other side. I mean, you know, it's like a yeah. freeway, two lane, two lane going through a tree. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 These are great, guys. Awesome. Thank you, Jeff. So cool. Thank you. I hope you guys fun. learned Okay, things. so now does it all compute? What oh, is yeah. happening? So, yeah. I just hope I can do something now. Yeah. You Start can. out with just coasters. Don't stress about it. Put color down. You notice they didn't use a ton of colors, right? Four. Yeah. Yes, I like that. And My that general formula. For people ask all the time, how do you choose your colors? I take the main color that I would want represented, something, then the next color would be off um, the opposite of the color wheel. So if I choose a purple, then I would use 
maybe yellow, but I don't usually put yellow and purple together because that's LSU colors. So I'll use gold. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I'll use a black and then some kind of metallic. Mm -hmm. That's it. I'll use one color will be shiny and one will be a flat because that's a, a nice juxtaposition where like this area isn't the same sparkly as this area. You don't want something to overload the person that's looking at it. When you say shiny though, do you mean like metallic? Yes. Okay. Something shimmery. Because it's all it kind of shiny. It It'll all stay I mean, shiny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying though. So you don't want <clears throat> to overload the viewer. You want to have something matte to accentuate the shiny and you want to have something dark to accentuate the light just you want to keep be mindful of opposing things in every piece you want to have the opposition to make it more visually interesting which you probably have already said all i about. try to get them to but it's good that you say it too because then they hear they hear it more anytime we can help we're always here we answer our emails what is that that is a <laughs> canvas tr support. So, they, they, it's like a tripod you put under the canvas on each corner to lift it, but they are so hard to get it to set on and not fall off because it wants to slide mm -hmm. that none of us use it. If anymore. you pick the, it up, it's hard to get it back in the same spot and working with any liquid art form, you want to make sure it's level as possible so everything doesn't slide off. Yeah. So we use um, spray paint caps. Yeah. We use <laughs> a lot of spray paint. We reuse as much stuff as we can. Like if I order That's Amazon awesome. like delivery for like Amazon Fresh and it comes in those like aluminum padded thermal pocket, I, I ship out paint in those. I ship out canvas in those. Anything that comes in here, I'm gonna find a way to reuse it. That's awesome. So, so yeah, well, it was our largest. Just. So bigger. how did you do? And now we're making um, them like a little bit bigger. A little so this is a report. So you sell those? I did. Um, we have them here too, if you. An yeah. alcohol ink piece, oh, yeah. and then <laughs> um, a friend of mine, Scarlett, gotcha. came over and she taught me how to do so embossing. And that that video I posted two days ago. Oh. Okay. And you'll be able to see it go um, back into her history, and you'll find it. Okay. And she taught me how to do embossing. So basically, it was a stamp that had glue on it. And then there's a powder that you put on it, and when you hit heat on it, it adheres, so yeah. it's not going to come off. And so I'll either leave that flat, or I'll do a clear resin over it. All of those ones over by the window, all the coasters over there, I don't know where he put them. No, no they're in the sun? Yeah. Mm, yeah, maybe. Um, those were done with embossing powders as well. No. Those? Well, then those are over there. Oh yeah, they're all down here, all these. Oh, those. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm familiar with it, like, in terms of, you know, stamping on paper. Mm -hmm. You can do a boss thing with this. Yeah. So you can do that with... Are you, you use these? I don't. Um, I use powders that are specifically made for embossing. Okay. Um, but anytime we have someone new or has questions or gets stuck on their like they get in an artist funk we encourage them to find a new medium to play with and incorporate that into your pores if that's your main art form and a lot of times people are struggling to find their unique style so i'm like do something else go out there and um learn yeah. something about a new art form and incorporate that into what you're doing so yeah, that makes sense so jeff is re trained in airbrush so sometimes we incorporate airbrush into our pores and look how nice that, that is, is so cool so y'all in internet land thanks for <laughs> being a part of our candid live feed yeah that was weird not answering questions thanks for joining us Mm -hmm. All right. So if there was any question that I missed, please shoot me an email, thorninatartistillet.com. Read all of these things and follow us on our other social media stuff. Don't forget to be kind to one another. You never know what someone may be going through. And we'll see you guys on a live later today. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah we'll still go our regularly scheduled time this evening. Thanks, y'all. Bye. I said bye.